This isn't bad. The hideout Maito had found was under a large bridge that crossed over a river. It was a tunnel as wide open at each end as a Buddhist temple. What looked like plumbing passed through the tunnel, and clear water ran towards the river. He suspected it was purified wastewater, so it didn't bother him. The air was damp, and he smelled a vegetative odor like moss, but the tunnel was spacious enough to bound around, and the cool feeling of concrete was refreshing. Cursed spirits like certain seasons. Negative emotions accumulate in humans from the end of winter towards spring. They reach peak maturity during the rainy season. Inside the moist tunnel, the air was humid, like in the rainy season. The dim light was gloomy, which was perfect for breeding fear, and the damp was comfortable. Yeah, this'll do nicely. Following one's instincts is the best way to choose a place to live. It's probably what's best for humans, too. But while they never did it intuitively, Mahito was able to decide without hesitation. Drifting was freedom, and so was feeling at ease. In high spirits, he strode across the concrete floor, his footsteps ringing out on the hard surface. He was thinking about how smoothly the metabolizing of souls would go in this welcoming atmosphere when he noticed the presence of... something. Hmm? At first glance, it didn't appear to be anything more than a bundle of old rags. He thought he was looking at trash, a result of humans and their littering. With the silhouette of a large drawstring sack slumped leaning against the wall, it was motionless. As he looked at it, though, Mahito realized it had the shape of a soul. Oh, so it's alive. It was a man wrapped in an old cloth. His long hair and beard had obscured his human shape. His exact age wasn't readily apparent. He might have been 60 or over 80, elderly at any rate. His presence was a nuisance. Maito had finally found a hideout and someone was already living there. Of course, it would be no trouble getting rid of the man, but still, it was unpleasant. Like noticing a stain on the wall of a new house. Maito released a small sigh and extended his hand toward the old man. Suddenly, the man spoke. Sorry if you find me unpleasant. Huh? I don't know what you've come for, but finding an old-timer like me here must have spoiled your mood. But I don't have anywhere else to go either. Mahito was taken aback. The old man was clearly aware of Mahito and addressing him. That wouldn't be surprising if they had both been human, but Mahito was a cursed spirit. The eyes of a mere human shouldn't be capable of apprehending the existence of cursed spirits. Of course, it wasn't impossible. Humans with innate cursed energy could perceive cursed spirits, and that wasn't exactly rare. What drew Mahito's interest further was the fact that the old man didn't have any eyes. Horrible burn scars covered the sockets where his eyes should have been. Even sorcerers looked at the world through their eyes, in addition to being aware, sorcerers relied on vision. For that reason, most sorcerers used sunglasses to hide where they were looking. They did it to avoid arousing suspicion in cursed spirits as well as to preserve their emotional equilibrium in a world teeming with curses. But this old man wasn't like that. You can see me? The old man nodded in response to Mahito's question. I can sense you. Even though you can't see your surroundings? Of course. Like the scenery, it's unclear to me what kind of features you have, what color your skin is and whether you're a man or a woman, the old man said. Nonetheless, I know you're there. Are you a sorcerer? Mahito asked. I don't think so. You don't sound sure, even though you're referring to yourself. I've been unsure about myself for a long time, the man responded. Mahito noticed something then. He usually sensed the souls of human beings as shapes. They could be spiky, shriveled, weak, or quivering as if reverberating. They fluctuated. However, this old man's soul revealed little fluctuation. He was like a grassy field with no wind, a sea with no waves, a blue sky with no clouds. No, Mahito realized. The more appropriate comparison was to a rock. He had a soul like a boulder by the side of the road, unadorned, unpolished, unmoving, unwavering. It just passed the time in tranquility, quietly gathering moss. That was the shape of this old man's soul. No matter how mild human beings might be, no matter how old they got, their souls wavered. Even after the passage of years, preconceptions didn't vanish entirely, and people found it hard to dispel their greed and conquer their fears. But this old man was different. His soul was peaceful, 
he had fully accepted that he would wither with time. And that was why he wouldn't waste his life in unnecessary distress. It was almost like a truly natural existence. Mahito had never encountered a human being like that before. All right, y'all. That is section three, chapter three of Allegory in Darkness, Mahito's chapter. I am going to continue saying that this is Mahito's chapter because my boy does shine in his chapter. A truly natural existence. Spoiler warning for chapter 214, which drops tomorrow, as of right now. A truly natural existence literally just sounds like the conversation that Magukana and Yuji just had. Like, you maggots, why do you constantly strive to be happy even though you are frail, weak, dainty, fragile, and can't do a damn thing about it? And then Yuji says, why can't you just be normal? Chew on this misery. God, it's so beautiful. Anyway, now we have Mahito in this section of the chapter explaining what the soul of his um, new roommate <laughs> looks like. And he says it's like, an, it's like a boulder by the side of the road. Unmoving, unchanging, unwavering, un, unrelenting, just permanently there. A monolith is another word for them, actually. Um... Doesn't that kind of seem like Yuji? I mean, I know I say that he's a cog in a clock quite often, but is a boulder by the side of the road also not just a potential lump of iron for all you Blue Lock fans, an unpolished gem, something like that? Like, I think that's another thing that Mahito says. It's like unrefined, unpolished. This thing is just a hunk of earth the grindstone that sounds like a cog in a clock to me that's yuji he's like higuruma said he's an unbreakable doll when it comes to yuji itadori pain don't stop him anyway i hope you also noticed all of the rivers and sewers and drainage systems and piping and plumbing that mahito enjoyed about his new home you know, just had to plug that real quick. <clears throat> Blueprints can be found on Twitter if you need backup on that theory. Shibuya is nothing but a bunch of river crossing. Maybe someday I'll do a video on that. Maybe. See you in the next one. I've rambled enough.